Looking for magic cards? Shop at Flipside Gaming using promo code LVD or find them on TCG Player through my affiliate link. Lurus is pretty fun. Even if we don't use it as a companion, it's still pretty powerful. If we wanted to, to force a cycling deck, we could take Reflection. Parcel Beast is great. Bastion's pretty good too. I mean, a lot of powerful cards here. But we can take Lurus and we don't have to force it as our companion, but like Lurus in a cycling deck can still be decent. You miss out on the Snare Tacticians, but you can still play a lot of the other payoff cards. There's a Bonner's Enclave, which can have its moments. Probably not at its best in black-white. Hemophage is pretty medium. Same with the Vulpic Heat. There's a Coil Bug if we want to stick to the requirements. And it is a non-human to potentially mutate onto. Maybe the land's still better. Just stay open, take the good card, which I think is the land. Yeah, we don't have to be black-white, we can be black-green and then the Enclave's pretty good. Ooh, speaking of black-green, I've been meaning to try this out, Unbreakable Bonds with uh, big cycling creatures. Could be a pretty fun strategy. Hope to get some of those sandworms, maybe the uh, Titanothorax, and get it back from the graveyard. Cavern Whisper would be okay too in this deck. Scarab Barons for fixing. But this I think has the most upside if it comes together. Perfect. Space Godzilla, cycle for three, get it back. Ram through would also be nice if we want to end up black green. Migration path for ramp. But uh Let's take this Godzilla. Deadweight is a great combo with Lurus. And still a solid removal spell. Call of the Death Dwellers can also get Lurus back, but if we're not going to be using it as a companion, then I don't want to focus too much on it. Nothing great here. Death's Oasis seems kind of tricky to build around. But I could still take it, just in case. Unlikely 8, Fumes are all playable, Glider if we end up black whites, fine. But I don't think I'm going to really miss those cards too much if we don't take them now. And who knows, maybe we do end up in uh, all three colors for Death's Oasis and we can make it work. Lots of cards I like here. Blitz Leech, nice to reanimate with Unbreakable Bond as well. Lead the Stampede could be good if we're creature heavy. Doesn't look that way yet. Let's take a Leech. Take another one. I uh, don't think Mutual Destruction is amazing, but if we end up with maybe a couple black-white uh, sacrifice fodder type creatures, could be okay. We're not really going wide for coordinated charge. Can take a corpse churn as a way to enable the graveyard for Oasis and Unbreakable Bonds. Otherwise, there's the Giraffids. Crystal could also be fine if we want to ramp into some of the big green creatures, and we've got Double Leech and Beckner at 6 and 8 already, so a bit of ramp from the Crystals could be fine too. But maybe we end up with enough graveyard synergies that Corpse Churn is an appealing option. Tiger versus Survivor's Bonds. I'll take a Tiger for now. Alright, so first pack, we're committed to black, but we're definitely not committed to white or green yet. So we can be flexible if we open a bomb in red or blue, I can still pivot. 
Haven't seen a ton of the big green cyclers yet, which I would like to combine with Unbreakable Bond. But uh, maybe that means we'll get to see a lot of green in pack 2. And we can hopefully pick up uh, a couple worms and maybe a back for more to reanimate them and fight. Ooh, there's back for more. What about Keruga? Not the easiest to cast with our current setup. Unless we go black-green, I guess. We wouldn't be using it as a companion, most likely. But it would still be a fine card to cast. Mm, I think I still prefer back for more. And then just take every big cycler we find. Farfinder also card I wouldn't mind wheeling, maybe the Trumpeting Gnar, if we end up Sultai. Let's take back for more. Yeah, Sandworms, the green Godzilla that we can cycle. Those are high up on the list. Not gonna pass up on a Blood Curdle. Nothing else in the pack that I want. Another one. So we're getting past all the good black cards. Just gonna try and get some of the green cards as well here. I mean, it makes sense we're getting past black since we cut off black in pack one. Nothing I really want here. We're not a human stack for Sanctuary Lockdown. Maybe Garrison Cat as random sacrifice fodder to go with uh, Destruction and Lurus. Don't think I'm splashing red. Could take an impulse. Or I could take an unlikely aid. But it doesn't seem great in my deck. I'll take a cat. Probably needs more cheap creatures for unlikely aid to be good. Alright. I mean, it's kind of close here with Grim Dancer. But I think it's still the Blood Curdle. Can't really go wrong with good removal. What's the max amount of blood curdles? Probably like six or seven. So we've got the perfect setup for those green cycling creatures. But it uh, doesn't look like we're gonna get any since green seems to be cut off from both directions. Right now Voidbackener is like the best we can do. And Blitzleech if we get it in the graveyard, maybe with the Corpse Churn. But I really want uh, the Sandworms. So ideally we end up black-green, don't need to play the whites, but maybe we'll be forced out of uh, green, we'll see. It's unlikely that we're gonna play Death's Oasis, but not impossible. Wow. Not a Grim Dancer, not a Deadweight, Ivy Elemental could also be okay, not the best to reanimate with uh, Unbreakable Bond and back for more. It's probably Grim Dancer over Deadweight. Take another leech, I guess. Nothing here that I want. Alright, might play these corpse churns. Goriak, also like a reasonable blocker if we wanted some early defense. But we might be able to go pretty all-in on these Graveyard Synergies with Corpse Churn. I need some cheaper stuff, some like 2, 3, 4 mana creatures, and ideally some Sandworms to cycle and get back. Could have also taken the Terron there, in case we want to like pivot into blue somehow. Alright, last pack. Nothing amazing. Could take Pacifism if we want to stick to Whites. Could just take Evolving Wilds or Call of the Death Dweller, but don't have many cheap creatures I want to reanimate outside of like a Lurus and a Grim Camp and a Grim Dancer. I guess there's Farfinder, that's fine. 
Just a decent value creature. Help us hit our land drops since we want to cast some pretty expensive cards. So yeah, Farfinder seems like the pick. Skull Prophet seems kind of perfect. Bit of ramp, bit of graveyard uh, filling. Already have triple leech, so don't need another one. Splendor Mare could be good if we wanted to stick to white. Don't think I can splash Parcel Beast realistically. I have a Farfinder and that's it, so not much fixing. Probably Jungle Hollow. We're not super interested in Symbiote, we're not mutating in this deck. Wild Bonders an option too, has just a double green card we could play. Where's all the sandworms at? Maybe Blossoming Sands if we end up splashing white still. There we go. At long last, we get a sandworm. Maybe there's hope we get another one. Excavation Mole, good enabler and early creature that we could use. Guess I'll take all the leeches if no one else wants them. Alright, we're not gonna get another worm, sadly. So our deck didn't entirely come together, but we still have a couple nice cyclers here to get back. Probably want the Goriak. So I don't think Oasis is making the cuts, don't think we're playing white. So the game plan is Corpse Churn and Mole, hoping to mill over some of these creatures and then get them back with uh, Unbreakable Bonds and back for more. At least the Enclave should be good with uh, all these expensive creatures in the deck. How is Lurus looking like in this deck? Not great. It's okay with dead weights and a profit, but that's about it. But it's still a 3-2 lifelink. Yeah, I would have liked a, a little bit of extra ramp. And uh, no, you can play lands with Lurus, sadly. Um, not super interested in Scorpion. Wild Bonder could be like a decent medium-sized creature to fill up the curve. Symbiote would be... Just a 2 mana 2 twin in this deck, which is not too exciting. Bit of synergy with Lurus, but that's about it. Scorpion could also be like a fine creature to recur with Lurus, but I'm not interested in a 1 mana 1 2. Yeah, I guess Sleeper Dart's nice with Lurus, so might play that one. Don't think I can play Thwart since we don't have a mid-game really to build up a board. How many of these leeches do I play? Four maybe? Five is a bit much. Mutual Destruction... Could also be cut. It's okay with Farfinder. Yeah, even four copies is a lot, if we're being honest. Uh, I don't think I need Call the Death Dweller since there's not many cheap creatures I want to get back. And then I could see cutting the Mutual Destruction. And Impulse is always cuttable. Doesn't really help me find the reanimation spells here. Alright. So black green reanimator with four blitz leech. Yeah, do have a bit of a gap in the uh, mid part of the game. But uh can always cycle these of course to hit our land drops and find some action. 
And then the Enclave seems fine too. Mana distribution, pretty heavy black, so 8, 7, seems okay. Uh, we've got the Lurus plus Deadweight combo, I'm missing black mana. And I don't have a great way to fill the graveyard for Bond and back for more, but I think it's still a keep. Alright, found our targets. Nice, can cycle the Void Beckner and then reanimate it. Skull Prophet turn 2, perfect. So I think this turn I could play Lurus, so next turn I get uh, Deadweight back. Or I could just cycle Void Beckner, activate this to mill myself, and then next turn cast Unbreakable Bonds. Kinda like cycling the Beckner a bit more here. I don't have enough black mana for Lurus Deadweights. Prophet also keeping the Gnar back on defense. Oh, <laughs> double leech in the graveyard. You love to see it. So... We've got options. Can Unbreakable Bond get back our giant death touch creature? Although, opponent could be sitting on their own blood curdle here. Could get back leech killing Whisper Squad, which is okay. And then maybe we hold the back for more to get back the... 8 8 Death Touch to fight with. Because it is an actual fight, right? So the Leech is not the best at fighting. Yeah, I think I like Leech right now and then next turn back for more. I don't have a Shore Shark on the splash here. But Bouncing Leech is not the best value. So just gonna quickly play land and pass. Opponent will think we have Blitz Leech, but in reality we have back for more at the ready here. but still have the option of playing the leech instead. Probably not going to see any attacks, if we're being honest. But uh, still like getting back our Godzilla. Alright. So Void Beckoner can attack. Can go Lurus Deadweight, although there's nothing to actually finish off with the Deadweight. So I'll just pass. Don't think I need to mill with the Prophet anymore. Yeah, they can't really attack because of the leech could shrink the 3-3 down to a 1-1 and block it. Fiend Artisan, that's a good one. Now, can I kill them here with the Menace from Blood Curdle? 
Let's say I go leech end of turn, untap. Ooh, interesting. Okay. They did shrink down their fiend artisan this way, but still big enough to survive the leech. So I guess we can just leech, kill a whisper squat with death touch. Don't think I mill with profits, and then I can blood curdle the fiend artisan, attack with a menacing void beckoner, or I can give leech menace and attack with it, so they have to double block. Got some options. So I have enough mana for Blood Curdle, Lurus, Deadweight. So I could force him to chump with the Fiend Artisan, is that right? I mean, I guess I can force him to chump with the Nar token, it's kind of the same. Because if I play Lurus, Deadweight, the Whisper Squad, and then Blood Curdle, one of their creatures, give, I guess, a Leech Menace attack with both, Pwnt has to chump. Seems good. All right, and our opponent packs it in. That's pretty disgusting. Up against an Obosh deck. Uh, yeah, I mean, this seems fine. Just need a third land for Farfinder to get green. It's a little clunky, but it's hard to mulligan a hand with back for more and blood curdle. There's our first green mana. They can keep their scorpion for now. How do we even sedate a scorpion? Does it work? Command and make a token, pretty nice. Could play Grim Dancer here. It's probably better than Farfinder. So I want lifelink and... I don't plan to attack with it anytime soon and we can give Menace with Blood Curdle, so I think lifelink death touch is fine. Opponent on Jund. Wolverine, sure. Probably just keep up Blood Curdle if they play their Obosh here. They want to take a million. Wow, Brokos mutated on a serrated scorpion. That works. How am I beating Brokos? I can keep it tapped down for a turn with the sleeper darts. Gotta kill all their creatures one by one. It's gonna be tough. For now I could just block and trade, or I could take 6 and keep it tapped down for a turn. 
still think I'm better off keeping Blood Curdle for uh, Obosh. I guess trade and corpse churn is reasonable. Hope to mill something good for back for more. Yeah, I guess they can mutate on the humans here at least, so they don't have that many targets left. Probably just replay Grim Dancer. It is cool that we can fight with a Death Touch Grim Dancer so we can take anything out next turn potentially. If I keep a Curdle, then they're just gonna attack for six. And then who knows what else they'll do. That seems bad. So let's say they mutate onto the Wolverine. What do I do? Probably just trade again. And then I can pass with back for more and blood curdle up. And back for more can get back or Grim Dancer once again. So we stay at 16. A leech is a nice pickup too. So we're slowly running them out of uh, non-humans to mutate. Thanks with the token. Don't love going for the back for more into a removal spell at instant speed. So maybe I just let it happen. Could also Blitz Leech. But I'll take the one. Makes sense. So now I could back for more, get back Grim Dancer, fight a Night Squad Commando, gain three. Sure. Could tap out for Wild Bonder, or we could keep a Blood Curdle once again. I don't mind tapping out for it. Like this turn, they don't have a great mutate target. If they play Obosh, it's not that bad since tokens are uh, an even mana cost. Still gonna be in trouble if they keep drawing non-humans. But for now, we're staying in the game. Alright, good target for the Blitz Leech. Unless they mutate onto it right now. Play a Bosch instead. So that deals four. But it would kill everything that I block with here. So that happens. And I can maybe sleeper dart it. Allurus can get back dead weights. Killing the brushwag. It's also pretty decent. Do I have enough mana for Allurus dead weight curdle? I guess I do. So I guess maybe that's the more appealing option then. And 
then no need to sleeper darts. Can slowly chip away at their 1-1 humans with the dead weights. And sleeper dart plus Lurus is a combo too, by the way. Can just draw a card every turn. So maybe I should have tapped down a commando. Mutual destruction. That works. Oh, Lord Dracus mutated. Didn't think we want to let that happen. They can mute it on the Dracus, but next turn I could dead weight and leech to kill the Dracus. So I don't need to sack sleeper dart right now. And get in there with the Wild Bonder and find if they double block. Alright, we ran them out of cards. And now we can start getting a sleeper dart value too if we want. It's not gonna tap the creature down, but I just wanna get it in the graveyards. Enclave too, all the value engines. Sandworm we can hard cast. Just the Wild Bonder attacks. Alright, we're looking good. Scorpion they can mutate onto. Fair enough. But... Yeah, they can't block the sandworm profitably. Corpse churn can also get some stuff back. So where to begin? I can essentially deal 11 unless they want to chump. Probably start by just casting the corpse churn, see what we hit. Right, just a Grim Dancer. Probably recur the dart now. And then we'll attack with just a worm. Should be safe to just tap out. Could also draw with a uh, land here instead, but... How much life do we have? 14? Let's still go with lifelink and death touch. We can essentially draw three cards per turn here with sleeper darts, enclave. All right, they've got their own worm. It's not bad. But can they survive? Start by drawing with Enclave. I can cast Deadweight out of the graveyard, take out a 1-1 one, one token, points got three blockers. So as they go, let's say they go block, 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 they still take way more than lethal, so yeah. GG's. Alright. 
opponent got a lot of value from their Brokos, but we kind of outvalued them with all our graveyard recursion. That was a sweet game. On the play. Yeah, don't hit it. Turn 3 Mole. A Leech to go with Enclave. Bit of removal. If I could make like one or two adjustments to the deck without adding any overpowered cards, it would probably be maybe an extra Mole over the Goriak at 3. And then maybe an extra Sandworm to cycle to combo with her back for more. Leech in the graveyards. Can maybe cancel out any plus one counters they pick up from the symbiotes. Could just blood curdle mentor attack for three. Don't know how I feel about that. Think I'm just gonna. Hmm. If I let them untap, they can put counter on Symbiotes, but I guess we can cancel those out with Leech later, so I don't care too much. Let's just play defense. Hopefully our late game's better than theirs. I'll take the trade. No attacks. That's dying. It has too much text. I don't like it. Alright. So don't have much going on this turn. Can cycle the sandworm. It's probably okay to do. Alright, so we will be able to back for more getting back a sandworm, potentially. I guess a leech can go. Could be greedy and discard land, but I don't think we have to be greedy in this spot. And then let's just main phase back for more. Don't want to have them blood curdle my worm in response. Mole can attack. If the Sandworm or the Leech survives, we can also start drawing cards with Enclave. Interesting, so this must be the Dead Eye. Yeah, they can keep their Dead Eyes. Yeah, it makes sense too. Face a lot of extinction events today. I think I just want a Leech to start drawing with Enclave, or I could go Farfinder into Goriak. And then wait on the leech for now, which is also reasonable. And then it can maybe attack into a bigger creature, shrink it down with a leech and finish it off. Dark bargain. Alright. Hopefully no removal on the leech, so we can use Enclave, even if it doesn't attack.
The mighty Brushwag is back. Corpse Churn, pretty good. If I get Leech back, I can play it, killing... Not sure what here, Symbiote. Maybe Halbonder. Has to be Leech. Maybe the Symbiote's Carrier. And then I can attack with uh, Goriak too. Four mana to pump. Don't really want to trade Leech for Halbonder at this point. Gotta make sure we keep as many four powered creatures for the Enclave as possible. 15 cards remaining, have one more Unbreakable Bond to get a creature back. We've got our Death Touch uh, Godzilla too. Ooh, wow, Monstrous Step on a Menace creature, that's quite a wombo combo. Triple Menace even, so we have to triple block it. So... I could block like this, but then of course... I don't take out a Halbonder. Or I could lose my leeches, but then I wouldn't be able to use Enclave anymore. I think doing it like this is probably still better. That way I get to attack with a leech for five and draw cards with Enclave. Death Touch Lifelink seems appropriate. Yeah, Monster Step plus Menace is definitely a combo. So Red Black or Black Green is where you can maybe pair those together. Like, it feels like if this game goes on for a while, I'm going to be favored thanks to the Enclave, mostly. So I don't mind playing it a bit more defensively. Take one. Sleeper darts, surprisingly useful. Probably should have played Dart first. So I can attack with a Grim Dancer. One can just block with a Mole. So I guess Menace would have worked out a little bit better. Still seems like a fine trade. All things considered. And then I can Sleep or Dart the Brushwag, which is probably the scariest card here. Yeah, I can tap down the Mole but I can keep the Brushwag tab down. Still have some good top decks left, so hopefully we can get one of those soon. Getting back a Leech from the Graveyard is pretty effective here. So yeah, one more Unbreakable Bond. Do I have any leeches left? Maybe one? Yeah, I have one leech left I can draw. And then the Death Touch Godzilla. Also have Lurus, which can get back dead weight over and over. Alright, leech down. Corpse churn, get back leech. I 
Or I can go for Lurus and then Deadweights. But Leech also lets me draw with Enclave. Although I've pretty much milled all my good cards now. Maybe Lurus Deadweight is better on this board. Alright, sure. Also have two blood curls left in the deck apparently. So we don't have many threats left, but we do have a lot of removal. Yeah, at this point I have to be careful not to deck myself before closing out the game, so the draw from the Enclave could also be a little sketchy. Opponent's not close to decking. Survivor's Bond for Umori. Oh, Leech is not bad. I could dead way to Umori attack. And then if they block we uh, Leech. I don't think I'll be drawing with Enclave at this point. Five cards remaining. Can't really afford to block here since we need our threats. Especially if we have a couple blood curdles left we could draw. I mean, maybe I'll draw enough turn. Haven't decided yet. If I drew into Skull Prophet, I also could have played it. So there was an argument for just drawing right away. Excavation Mole is fine. I guess if we draw Blood Curdle, they might just be dead here. So it's probably worth it. Alright, so we can dead wait to Hellbonder. Curdle them all. GG's. Another close and interesting game here. Needed all four leeches to get across the finish line. Alright, not bad. Got our gems back. On the play, no black mana. But one swamp goes a long way here. As we get to Deadweight, Curdle. Cycle Beckoner. I'll keep. All right. One is just cycling a bunch. If they get to see my greedy hand. Well, facing memory leak is not too bad when uh, you've got all spells. Takes a blood curdle. I mean, come on, chat. Have some faith. Probably got a cycle here. Don't hate that waiting and then setting up the leech for next turn. I 
That way it does get better if you have Leech in the deck too. I guess I can take two. Maybe they present a better target. Still at 18. Marmoset's pretty scary, so I don't mind just uh, killing it here. Could see removal on my leech, but we've got another one. We've got churn to get it back, unbreakable bond to get it back, so no lack of leeches. Cycles crater. Yeah, I can also get the Void Beckoner back next turn if we want to. Got options. But we could also have their own back for more or uh, Unbreakable Bonds. It's going to be Mentor instead. I could Corpse Churn to get uh, Godzilla back if I don't hit something else. Is that something I'm interested in? It's kind of like just drawing a card, but I'll have to spend three mana on it, so I wouldn't necessarily be able to cycle it again and Unbreakable Bond it. I think I'm fine to just uh, hold the Corpse Churn. Get in for five, make an 8-8 eight, eight, uh, Death Touch lifelink. The Leech has Menace, so they can block. Putting Menace on a Leech is also pretty good, since Otherwise it tends to get chumped by a uh, 2-2. Two -two. And we could have lethal next turn. Yeah, I'm not buying it. <laughs> If they have a sweeper, I guess they could have like the even odds, but then they would have cast it first. That I can also kill with the leech before they get a chance to block. So are we jumping with uh, Moloch here? think we are. So playing Leech end of turn doesn't change the math a whole lot. But yeah, they're still forced to chum the Beckoner, so I would get in for 5, put them to 1. Still seems okay. Don't have trample. But now the wild bonder itself is also lethal.
So what our opponent needs here is like white mana into Zenith Flare, pretty much. Even, even. So I don't want to play more even mana costs into a potential extinction event. I could play Grim Dancer, I suppose. Alright, sure. Menace. Alright, point on packs it in. Sweet, so we got a clean 7 0. Did have some doubts at the start of the draft with how many six drops we had in the deck. But uh, yeah, the leech definitely delivered. So this is the deck for anyone that missed the drafting portion. Not much of an early game, but Lurus plus Deadweight, Lurus plus Sleeper Dart did a ton of work. Of course, the triple Blood Curdle helped out quite a bit. And then the Unbreakable Bonds and Back for More to keep getting back leeches, sandworms, and Space Godzilla. And also can't forget about the Bonner's Enclave, that's one of some of those grindy games. So can be underestimated. Let's crack some packs. Another Obosh. Definitely a powerful card. Would be my first pick out of this, even though Fire Prophecy is not a bad second pick. I'll take uh, the best mythic. Is there an agreement yet what the best mythic in the set is? Is it uh, the Broodmoth? Is Vivian maybe better? Both of those are pretty busted. Not sure what the best rare in the set is. Could be... Kogla is a rare, right? That's a pretty good one. There's a lot of good rares in the set, for sure. All those multicolor ultimatums. Felidar is also very good. There's not a ton of incentives to go green-white specifically, but Felidar is not a bad reason. Even if you just splash it, Empathy can also be quite good. Oh yeah, Crystal and Giants, also definitely a contender for best rare, especially pack one, pick one. Here, what would we take? Probably Boneyard Lurker. If we want to force a cycling deck, Stinger's definitely one of the better non-uncommon uh, payoffs, as it's still kind of a payoff if you just play it for two. Mythos of Brokos. This was one of the rares we opened. I think it was in the previous draft. Not amazing, but of course if you're playing those colors, you'll play it. Not sure what I would take here. Might be Reflection over Empathy. Alright. So yeah, I want to thank everyone for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.